all this is semester two. Yes, we're, we're, we're now in semester two, uh, started in June, so just a couple of weeks ago. Our short semester, we have semesters starting in January, June and September. And the January and September ones are long ones, 13 weeks, this is just a seven week semester. So um, how the um, new intake is going to be like? Is it going to be more um, student intake? Next yeah, I mean, I, I, overall, INSIF is looking for increasing numbers of students, and that's partly um, you know, one of the reasons why we've, we've moved to a, a larger campus. Um, but the industry trend, besides growing in terms of the numbers of students and people who are interested in doing Islamic finance, um, the industry trend is very much for doing online learning as opposed to physically being on campus so uh, the, the, the trend uh, with us is, is, uh, is one of uh, a doubling of capacity in terms of e-learning as opposed to on campus so on campus is growing um, at, a, uh, at that kind of rate but uh, online is growing at that kind of rate so uh, that's outpacing um, the, uh, the actual campus training uh, that we do present. So what the percentage is like? I mean, local students uh, compared to... The, 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 the split is, is, is roughly 55% local, 45% foreigners at the moment. Um, but again, the acceleration is in foreign students. Um, so I think within two or three years, we'll have more foreign students than we will local. Um, we have students already, I think, from 79 countries. 79 um, countries. Yeah, which is more than half the countries in the world, I think. including the Euro or just the Middle East? Uh, um, predominantly, um, uh, the, the major sources are uh, Indonesia, Pakistan, India, Middle East. Uh, but we do have a number of students from Africa, uh, from Europe, some from North America, and some indeed from uh, Korea, Japan, and China, as well as Australia. So we're well represented all around the world. What about the lectures, the, the teachers? They're all local or...? No, no, there's a mix of, uh, of lecturers and professors. Um, the majority are local and, and well-established local, uh, uh, both practitioners and, uh, and professors. Uh, but we have a, a number of international professors from, uh, from the United States, from Iran, uh, from uh, North Africa, uh, from Turkey, uh, from India. Uh, and I think also from from Pakistan. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the programs uh, offered here in? Uh, so uh, I represent in INSEF here. So we 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 teach okay. uh, university accredited. Uh, programs by the Ministry of Higher Education. Mm -hmm. So we have three main uh, programs that we teach, all at postgraduate level. Um, the first is the Chartered Islamic Finance Professional, which is a master's level qualification, but the standards and the accreditation are professional standards. They are set by the industry. So there's a lot of input and interaction with the industry to set the standards for what they want coming out of this university. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a master's in Islamic finance program, which is more of a traditional master's, which, you, if you like, is a, a feeder to doing a PhD. So it's, if you like, training the trainers. So it's the academicians of the future. Mm -hmm. And we have a PhD by research, and that is done largely by people who are academic mm -hmm. or by some industry players who want to contribute back and to investigate particular areas uh, as part of their research. So they're the three main areas of, of, of uh, education that we do. In addition to that, we leverage off that education by offering uh, knowledge management. We have a knowledge management center here. It's a library, but it's also a digital library, and it's a repository for much of the research we do here and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So that's accessible by the industry uh, to come and take a look at what's being written and what's being discussed. Uh, we do uh, a number of what I call executive programs, which are short courses. Um, designed for busy executives. So they don't lead to a qualification, but they discuss and debate issues which may be pertinent to senior executives in Islamic finance or regulators. You know, for example, cross-border liquidity or the hedging of risk in a Sharia-compliant mm -hmm. way. 
And the third thing that we do is consulting. You know, this is advisory work, you know, based on the faculty here, which is partly academic and partly practitioner. I'm a former practitioner. We have a unique capability here to be able to answer the questions and set the directions for businesses all over the world. Uh, and we're starting to, to, to ramp up that business as well. So what do you think of the Islamic finance industry doing globally? How, how is it doing now? Uh, how is it doing? Um, I, I mean, uh, it's, it, it's um, growing. Uh, I mean, I'm, growing I'm, I'm not sure I can answer that question. It's a very general question. Are there more question. people interested in Islamic finance oh, based on the student uh, intake? Certainly. I mean, in terms of student intake, yes, the numbers are increasing. Why but do you I, think? But, well, I yeah. think a, a large part of it is, is the fact that the industry itself is growing and therefore, um, simply put, should be creating more jobs for people who are appropriately qualified. Mm -hmm. What's fueling the growth in the industry is, uh, is a, a reaction, uh, if you will, um, post-global financial crisis, which is starting to take more of a serious look at, at the, you know, what are the things in Islamic finance that we should be aware of. Um, you know, this whole thing around the real economy and the real assets supporting financing. Um, is getting increasingly uh, attractive to a world that sees mounting debt and uh, lots of financing based on, on what I would call uh, vapor, uh, not real benefit to the real economy. Uh, so that is uh, arousing a lot of interest and indeed, uh, from my experience in the last 12 months, more than 50% of the engagements I've been involved in in terms of speaking or lecturing have been in non-Muslim countries which certainly don't have anything in Islamic finance but they're interested in finding out more and, and therefore they come to INSEAF and say can you help explain this wow. and, and uh, generally there's been a positive reaction and uh, you know the net result has been either we take it to the next level and run an executive program or indeed they may even want to put uh, students uh, uh, and place them with us uh, here at INSEAF. So the students are not all Muslims, are No, they're not. Right? No. Them are I mean, the, the majority are, but there's, um, but there's a, 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 about uh, somewhere between 10, 15 percent are non-Muslims here. And we're looking at that number increasing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we certainly feel, as everybody should feel, Islamic finance is for everyone and it should be accessible to everyone. Can you share with us the expansion plan for NCF probably? Uh, I, uh, the, the expansion plan, uh, I, I think I can best answer that by saying we're looking at increasing student numbers, but largely through international collaboration. So we would work in partnership with other universities around the world and have our programs embedded there so they don't all come, you know, come here. Uh, we'd be looking at enhancing our e-learning capabilities so people can do things at a distance and through, through e-business. Um, I think also that we, you know, we'll be looking at our expansion through uh, programs and executive programs which help um, the world at large understand Islamic finance. Mm -hmm. you know, sadly, Islamic finance and Islam are misunderstood exactly. and, and uh, INSEAF can play its part by both tackling that directly by explaining it but also indirectly by explaining it to increasing numbers of students who graduate from here who actually understand how it works and then can answer the questions correctly and change the misperceptions because very often people have a misperception and nobody answers back and therefore they assume they're correct when of course they are incorrect but nobody said sorry you're incorrect you should look at it this way so if we improve the capacity of people to stand up and say you've got the wrong message this is what Islamic finance is about then the whole industry will benefit and, and the world will you know the world will benefit do you think the misconception is due to the negative um, uh, perception about Islam uh, well largely yes I mean and that's based on ignorance um, uh, you know and, and therefore it's an education issue that, that negative perceptions around Islam um, are, 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 are propagated and people get the wrong end of the stick and they jump to conclusions without having to think about it and um, that's why I'm saying education can help change that as well as having educated people who know their facts standing up and saying sorry you're wrong mm. it's like this you know the, there are many many misperceptions and uh, uh, I, I think we're all uh, you know we're all challenged and we all have a duty to correct them now, can you tell us a little bit about the collaboration that NCF is having with um, uh, the World Bank? Yes, I mean, uh, this is a, uh, an initial collaboration. 
um, it was formed on, on, on the basis and assumption that Islamic finance would form a major part of the alleviation of world poverty, which is the main mission of the World Bank. Mm -hmm. So through our experience and through our research, we will help research in that area. Mm -hmm. um, the other area where I think we, we're looking at collaboration is, is through general, what I would call, education, country by country, on uh, Islamic finance standards. Uh, and basis of how you would establish Islamic finance. And I think the, the World Bank is also keen that the, 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 the benchmark of uh, INSEF qualifications actually gets more global recognition as well. Okay, okay. that's very interesting. I think that'll be it. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Okay, Bakery. you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks so much. Time. Thank